hello 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 everyone welcome back to another video of all things cc here's my take this is episode seven and today i got a couple of topics that i want to talk to you guys about so if you are ready stick tuned okay you guys so before i get off into all the topics at hand i hope everybody had a wonderful weekend i hope that monday has been good to you guys i had a, a slow crazy start this morning but that's neither here nor there i made it thank god so let's just go on ahead and get the um the sad news out the way um and that is the beautiful irish grinstead of seven the girls groups 702 had passed away on september 16th which was sun saturday because um it was my mother's birthday so it was a bittersweet situation for me because she was my favorite of the group and I felt like she was always a good spirit. She was always humble when she didn't like to start drama. So just so sad to hear of her passing. You know, of course, a lot of us did not know that she was sick. And allegedly, they said that she had kidney failure. I don't know how true that is because her sister did not come out and say exactly what she passed away from which she does not have to um but i'm going to post the response from her sister here so that you guys can see it's just a sad situation um for you guys who are younger who didn't grow up in the 90s that don't know of 702 irish had a twin sister who was a founding member of the group because it, it used to be four and then it turned to three after her sister passed just a sad situation um all around i am praying for her family especially her son i know he's having a hard time trying to understand what's going on trying to process everything so i just really really pray for him that he gains the understanding and the love and the support that he is going to need in this time of need um, praying for Lamisha because they were like, you know, two peas in a pie, right or dies. And I know it's hitting her really, really hard as well. So let's just all just give our condolences and our well um, wishes and um, prayers and all those things to the family. May she rest in peace. And just love on your family members, you guys. This is a shocker for the music culture of Irish's passing so let's just keep the family in their prayers and let's just keep pushing forward you guys okay y'all so boom so let's get into this right here now I don't know how many of y'all listened to my last podcast about the VMAs and how Diddy had got a special award and how none of his artists was there to sing his songs with him but Keisha Cole and his son Justin and um, Young Miami, right? So remember when I talked about there was something, it was a hit the agenda on why he was giving his artists their publishing now. I told y'all, I don't believe it. I don't believe for one second that this man can do anything from the heart. It's always a hidden agenda. Do you hear me? Always a hidden agenda. And guess who came to give credit to what I was saying? Good old Aubrey O'Day. One of the um, group singers of the making the band group Danity came okay she came out and she had an interview and she talked about it take a listen to this clip here and then i'm gonna come back with my commentary that's a good question oh, nothing. you mentioned diddy i wanted to ask you about the uh, oh. whole thing with uh, bad boy he got all his he gave the rights back to a lot of bad boy artists any comment um yeah i'll talk about this Where's yours so this one has been bittersweet for me because i'm as I've gotten older, mm -hmm. I've let go of a lot of the trauma and I've learned to really appreciate some of the more personal, beautiful moments I've had with him. And he is the first person that gave me a platform to show my talent to the world. Um, you know, and I was at 17, I'm 39 now. So 
I have a hard time, I have a hard time talking about him before it was no good. Now I'm feeling, I feel loving moments for moments that we had together. Mm -hmm. But this banner that he's painted himself with all weekend long, this has been the Labor Day talk in my world, that he's paying back all of the bad boy artists. Um, I just want to throw you the facts, okay? Sure. The deal that we were offered, and when I say we, not every artist got it. Like day 26 did not get it. But um, this is what it is. You can have your rights back um, to your music after Puff went under and somebody else bought our catalog. So this is long after we have two double platinum albums, $14, $15 an album from two million albums is, what is the math on that, 48 million? Yeah, something like that. I'm a mathematician, but so, so $48 million somebody made on me. Yeah. I did not make anything. When I said I did Christina Aguilera for free, I didn't do Christina Aguilera for free, but the record label recouped it all. We were in debt at the end of that tour. Yeah, pretty crazy. So, so I worked for free for the first six, seven years of my career, basically, and also MTV was not paying us. And this is another part that I have that I feel some kind of way about because MTV since then, in these these recent years, has brought back every big cult show, meaning it had millions of followers and it was at least six seasons, right? Yeah. Making the band is one of those. They brought back Real World. They brought back Jersey Shore. They brought back Laguna Beach. Making the band is the only one that they did not bring back. And making the band is the only cult MTV show that made that network one of them that they have never played in one rerun, not one rerun. So I'd like to know why. And if it has something to do with Diddy, then again, what I'm wondering is when we're not being, when the deal is, when this benevolent man who's just now had a change of heart and has decided to pay us as talent and also as pub, as writers, we're credited um, in, in, with publishing. Um, so basically we only get the amounts due since Sony bought our catalog. Okay. So streaming for the past couple years, it's about $800, $900, some in the hundreds, okay? And in order to get that, I have to, release him for any claims or wrongdoings or actions prior to the date of the release. I have to sign an NDA that I will never disparage Puff, Bad Boy, Janice Combs, or Justin Combs Music, or EMI, or Sony ever in public. So that you just got recently for this thing? I got it a few months ago when okay, he started doing this. News now. So what's happening is artists, some of them, not all of them, are being given streaming royalties and ownership back over our publishing on songs that we wrote. Um, at a time when you know that you have to stream a song a million times to make point uh, a cent, yeah. okay? It, it's hundreds of dollars. And me as somebody that's a girl's girl, I hit everyone in my group and said, absolutely do not take this deal. I can get us a show on Hulu right now and uh, talking about boy bands and girl bands because you have to realize there's a handful, two handfuls at most of boy and girl bands that had platinum albums, two platinum albums yeah. that were, that, and that will never happen again. Music nowadays is run by TikTok and you can maybe get a song to chart well. Albums aren't being made anymore. There aren't conceptual albums like Christina was doing, like Justin was doing. You're not, those don't sell. It's a singles market game and it's a, it's a gimmick game at best. If you were to sign that NDA within that prohibit you from taking a deal where it's like you get a show about the I would best. never be able to do, I would like to do a documentary for Hulu or Netflix or Amazon, a streaming site no on boy band and girl bands. I, I have a bunch of members from a lot of very, boy bands that fit the criteria of a certain amount of, of status, yeah. platinum albums, awards, et cetera, Grammys, same with girls. The stories that we had to tell during a time in music where there were gatekeepers, there were people that owned labels like Puff running things and the way that the divisions and the divisiveness occurred and the things that we experienced between each other and us against the system are fucking insane. And most people that have had to go through those types of things like the real ways the Kardashians got to where they got, Ray J tried exposing a lot of that. They're still acting like that Ray J didn't expose them and that their Hulu show is all real. They don't have to really even notice Ray J because he doesn't come close to them. But what Ray J said was the truth and he proved it with facts. So at the end of the day, we're all just willing to turn a blind eye. Diddy is just literally known as the guy that doesn't pay his artists. And it's funny and then you move on and you like something that he did on TikTok because he's funny. But for people that worked for six years of their life and, and entered an industry where somebody made, what, $48 million? Yeah, like million dollars. And we didn't even see a penny of that and we were in thongs and five inch heels for years of our lives on stage. And not not any of it did we see. And the measly amount of change that MTV paid us, we don't even get to feel any benefit of that because they never brought the show back and they don't play it in reruns. So we can't even get the hype of, oh, hey, I remember this, they're cult classics, let me hire her for something. Yeah. Like all of them got, right? Mm -hmm. Jersey Shore kids are making millions of dollars. We were talented kids plucked out of oblivion and we all had a fucking dream to be at Madison Square Garden and perform, which we got to. And we were not expected to get there. And we're all incredibly talented, every single one of us. So to me, when I read this, I'm basically feeling like you're presenting yourself as the benevolent God that's giving everybody back their music. You've turned down millions of dollars to give the millions back to the people. This is the honest to God you can read from our attorney. Yeah. This is the honest to God agreement of what I'm being offered a few hundred dollars to sign away my rights to ever tell the story of what I went through again. And there's not going to be an era of girl and guy groups like that ever again with the way that music has transitioned. And I don't know if it will go back ever again to anything that's credible. Yeah, I don't, I don't really and, see it. And there's a story there and Hulu tells those stories and, and, and streaming, Netflix tells those stories. And there's so many paychecks. I offered girls, I called all of them. I offered some of the girls, hey, if you need 
eight, nine hundred bucks, I'll give it to you. Don't sign this. This is just a way to get you to never be able to publicly speak about what we have experienced. And the, and and to my knowledge, allegedly, there's only two of us from Danity Kane that did not sign this deal. And we were five originally? Yeah. Okay. And and it seems like a lot of other people are too, but you don't see them talking about how great, and maybe the deals are not the same that we're being offered. I don't know, but yeah. in this email, it does say, the money that you're getting is not coming through Puffy or Combs Music. This is a deal with Sony Music. Okay. Sony would be the ones that were paying us, EMI and Sony. And then you'd be getting the money back from Down to DK Music. I would get any muse, any money that, that the songs I wrote on that were streamed yes. make, which is a couple hundred dollars. Mm. This is not the money that we made when we released the albums. Yes. This is not the $48 million that two platinum albums got somebody. This is just some measly streaming money in order to stay hushed on Puff. Why he wants all of a sudden right now at this time, day and moment to offer deals to people that some of his artists have been rumored to be driving Uber to be able to feed their family. So a deal like this looks pretty good because you need the money or because you're scared to ever go against Puff. I'm somewhere in the middle of I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't I need the money. I'm clearly making it as we've discussed. And and I, I just wish that Puff would do what he's saying he's doing. I wish he would pay us what we deserved for all the work that we did. And I wish he would make right. Okay, y'all. So y'all hear what she said? Ain't that some shit? Basically, they still got to be silenced in order to get those little pennies of publishing. He done milked they publishing for all these years and now that he know that he ain't making no money for real for real with the streaming services now he want to give them their publishing rights the 800 some dollars she was seeing from publishing like ain't no way in hell and then she's like i contact all the girls and i told them don't sign this if you need 800 some dollars i'll give it to you but don't sign this to keep you silenced even more. Now, why would Diddy want them to sign NDAs if there is not something that is hidden that he does not want to come to the surface? And if you guys also did not know in my last episode when I was talking about his son and how he was in his daddy's shadow and we want to see him do things outside of his daddy and bad boy come to find out his son was being paid royalty payments for the song that Mace was on when he was a baby even though he didn't have anything to do with producing a song writing a song he was getting publishing checks as a baby so it only made sense that his son would come out and sing Mace Park which I think was a slap in the face now Aubrey she said listen I called all the girls and told them don't don't sign it and as of today only two people would of the group did not sign it and i'm like well damn they really like what was the reason for them to still sign it were they really pressed for the money or they thought that they would be able to you know get people to stream their music for like the new generation who never heard it and i'm like why would y'all sign that away why would y'all want to be silenced again and the only person that I can think that did not do it was Don Rashad. And if not her, then it probably D Woods. But only two out of the five? Something wrong with that. Something wrong with that. Y'all are literally still letting this man dictate you guys telling y'all truth and all that stuff about what y'all experience with this man. And then to have it say, you know, pretty much don't be saying nothing bad about Puff Daddy, um, his mama, I think her name was on it, and Justin. Like, why is he even in the non-disclosure agreement? Like, what? Now it all makes sense. Because Justin is, is, he's a part of it more than people realize, even though... He didn't put himself in this position. His father did. So quite naturally, people are going to look at Justin's side eye like, yeah, okay. I told y'all it was some bullshit in the game with that. He is not that nice of a person to want to give people their publishing rights after all these years of milking them. 
If he cared about his artist like that, he would have been Diddy. But no, that's 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 not Diddy. That's not his style. And then he reinvented himself for this new generation by calling him Brother Love. Man, I I wish I would. I wish I would. See, this new generation is blindsided about who you really are. See, my generation, we grew up with you. We know what you about. We know how sneaky you are. We know how grimy you are. You don't just do stuff from the heart. I don't even see that as being something within you. Because you don't you don't bring you don't come off as a genuine person. It's always feels like a fucking gimmick to me when it comes to him. But I told y'all. It was some bullshit in the game with that. And now they got to sign non-disclosures in order to get get their publishing pennies. pennies. That is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. And I am so glad that Aubrey didn't sign it. Because she had her lawyers looked at it. And now I can say one, that's one thing about Aubrey that I, that I like. She spoke her mind. She never gave two fucks. She spoke her mind when she felt she was being wrong. And in this case, yeah, this is wrong. On all fronts, this is wrong. She had her lawyer look at the contract. Now, that's a woman that's about business and can't be silenced. Because if she could be silenced, they would have did it a long time ago. So, y'all, this is the, this this is a mess. I just feel bad for the artists because they the ones that do the most work, blood, sweat, and tears, touring, doing videos, you know, just all this stuff that comes with being an artist, an entertainer, and they come out broke. I don't. That's that's heartening. That's heartbreaking. And it's not right. Mm-mm. But Diddy, I knew it. You ain't slick. You and your team is not slick. I knew it was some bullshit in the game. And now it has all came to the surface because somebody with some balls had enough guts to say, no, nah, I'm not signing that because you're not about to silence me no more. Now, Aubrey, now you got to start writing books and stuff. Now, now you got to start doing podcasts or, you know, You got to start doing something. You got to start doing something. And so that's, that's, that's my take on this whole Diddy situation. Child, say it ain't so, Remy Ma. Say it ain't so. Now, if you guys have been under a rock, rumor has it that Remy Ma have been cheating on Papoose. And... I heard this months ago. But of course, I wasn't really indulged in it or whatever because, you know, I looked at Remy Ma and Papoose as a stand-up married couple. A stand-up married black couple at that. And the way that he loved on her and supported her and all those things, even when she was in prison, like, he was a stand-up guy. Remy Ma, I had started to like her after she got on Love and Hip Hop. Because I really didn't care for her music like that. Like, she had one or two hits that I bopped to. But other than that, I could never get into her music. And that's no shade to her. I just couldn't get into her music. Now, a lot of people felt like their they, they union was... Um, questionable like it was kind of odd and I know I'm about to probably get some some pushback on this but I got to be real transparent and honest I've always felt like Remy Ma did not love Papoose the way that he loved her I've never got that vibe it's all it always felt like she would put on for the cameras she is, I just got that vibe, y'all. And although they made a good couple, 
and they seemed like they had it together, I just always got that vibe that she was not in love with him like he was with her. I think she realized, damn, nobody's gonna really fuck with me in prison like this. Nobody is gonna fuck with me for real when I get out of prison. Let me go on ahead and just make this shit official with him and just, you know, it is what it is. And when the rumor came out that she had cheated and that Papoose had jumped on the guy that she was cheating on him with, I was like, oh my goodness, are you serious? Now, fast forward to maybe like a couple of days ago. Remy Ma was at a rap battle with the guy in question that she is allegedly cheating on Papoose with, right? She is at the rap battle. The dude, his name is Easy. Easy something something cap. I don't know. The dude Easy was battle rapping this guy named Geechee. Y'all take a look at this video and I'm gonna come back with my commentary. That ain't no regular female, my nigga. That's his wife. Knocking you out compared to what he could have did to you. Nigga, that was life. And you're not off the hook either. If you gon' cheat, then let's cheat with a nigga that can fight. You know this ain't right? You know this ain't right? You know this ain't right? Come on, y'all know this ain't right. <laughs> Six chrome events. Papoos was at all of them. How come he ain't at this one? Woo! That's a good ass question. Don't worry about it though. Don't worry about it. Why he ain't at this one? Why we ain't in New York? Why we ain't in New York? Because the last time there your husband punched on him, so you actually bring it to where he more comfortable at, so if he did decide to show up, this weirdo can have an ups on him? Ooh! 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 <laughs> so if he do show up, he can have the ups on him. Man, you fail for real. I hope that I'm really your home, your child don't feel. How can you support him? How can you protect the nigga that so he couldn't protect you is wild for real? Oh. This nigga's a chump. This nigga's a chump. You know he ain't got the heart fool. Fucking a nigga bitch when you ain't got hands ain't even a smart move. Ah. Ah. Fucking a nigga bitch when you ain't got no hands ain't no smart move. But if I was you, I would have been like Bourbon Hitman and you would have been the one I talked to. Like, I don't give a fuck if you fucking this nigga. Just tell him stop screwing the business. If niggas felt out you was fucking the help, that could really ruin your image. We're talking to Rock and Michelle, Pap and Rim. Nigga, that's us. Y'all the poster child symbol for black love. Now, I don't know about y'all, but the way that Geechee was talking and the facial expression of Remy, part of me feel like it's true. Part of me feels like it's true. And if it's not true, she is she damn sure ain't going hard to try to debunk the situation. And if she is, it's just, oh, it, stop running with the lies and... You know, and that's that. Papoose has not came out and said anything. I know that he really is not into the drama on social media and stuff like that. But if somebody is allegedly saying that you put your hands on this guy and you jumped him and your wife cheated on you. Yeah, I would think Papoose would stand up and say, nah, that ain't, nah, we good over here. But Papoose has not came out and said anything. He wasn't even there at the rap, the battle rapping. And really that's unusual because he be around Remy a lot, or at least he used to. So it's like, what's really going on? Is Remy mine? Are you feeling yourself? Now that you lost all this weight and everything like that, you eating healthier, like, are you feeling yourself right now that you feel like you can just go out and, you know, sleep around or whatever the case may be? Now, mind you guys, everything that I'm saying is allegedly, even though the videos are 
surfacing around, I'm still gonna say allegedly, okay? But the way that Geechee was spitting, my mouth was open like, oh my God. And of course, in battle rapping, you can't really show your emotions. You can't show that you are affected by what somebody is saying because battle rapping, all, thing go, all things go. There is no, well, you all kids are off limits and this, this is off limits. No, this is where you get to say the most disrespectful ass shit of your opponent. And you got to be strategic with it. Like, you got to hit them where it hurts. Like, it's a cutthroat industry battle rapping. And I don't understand. I, I get it that Remy came from it. But if this is what you are resorting to. Because I have. I haven't been watching loving hip hop so i don't know if she's still on the tv show i don't know but if she is that's probably why i have not been following her lately because she's doing battle rapping and stuff so i can't say that she's not out here doing anything because she's not on loving hip hop i just have not been interested in following her like that I think the last time I really followed her was when she was doing the um, the Joba and um, the culture. And I actually liked her on the culture because she was able to give a female's perspective of the music industry and trending topics and stuff. I liked her on the culture. But of course, that was short-lived. I don't know if that was something that happened between her and Joe Button, or it was just a, a contractual thing. Like, I don't know. But I actually like the culture. I wish they bring it back. Cause I was watching it all the time when she was on there. But nonetheless, y'all, the rumor has resurfaced because of this battle rapping. And it's, it's child. <laughs> This music industry is crazy. The things that these celebrities do, like, it's just crazy. I really do hope that the rumors are not true because Papoose do not deserve that. But at the same time, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. We don't know if Papoose is being, you know, extra or you know what I'm saying, verbally or emotional abusive. Like we don't we don't know what he does behind closed doors. We just know of what he has showed us and that's you know supporting her and holding her down for six years in prison and all this and marrying her, making an honest woman out of her, having a family with her. Like we only seen that part of him. We don't know exactly what actually goes down before they lay their heads down at night, right? But for the most part, he is a stand up guy. And I just really hope that these rumors are not true because if it is, Remy Ma, you are grimy for that. And then you doing it with somebody that that's not even on his flat on your husband level. Like, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Like, how did you allow for this rumor to go this long if it's not true? Cause shit, me and my husband, we gonna we gonna go on live, we gonna go on the interview, and we gonna debunk all this bullshit. I'm not gonna stay silent, and I don't want him to stay silent if we know for a fact that the rumors are false. So yeah, something don't smell right. Some don't smell right. So that's all I got to say about this topic right here. I'm about to get into my last topic, you guys. My, 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 my. Jeannie, my. Girl, what you do to that black man? Jeezy has filed for divorce from Jeannie, my Jenkins of two years. 
how many of y'all think that it was coming? I'm not gonna lie. I thought that it was a, a, a solid thing. I thought it was a solid thing. And the way that they were loving on each other and speaking, you know, highly of each other. Like, I thought it was a good thing. And I thought that they was gonna stand the test of time. <laughs> but baby, Mr. Jeezy himself threw in a monkey wrench after two years. Which makes me wonder, Miss Jeannie, what did you do, girl? What did you do? And why did you do it? Now, rumor has it that she, well, I ain't gonna say rumor has it, but according to multiple sources, she um, was on an interview a while back and she was talking about how she did not recognize that she had anger issues and that he had to check her about it. Ain't that some mess, y'all? That your husband had to check you and tell you that you have a temper and you didn't realize it. How you didn't realize that you had a temper and all this? Like... Was you a wolf in sheep's clothing? Like, I don't understand it. So then I started thinking, I'm like, okay. I do remember her saying back when she was on The Real that she preferred her main, her main course to be white meat. But she don't mind some chocolate for dessert on the side. I remember her saying that. So she preferred white over dark. So it had me thinking, well, well damn, Jeannie, did you get with this man? Because it made you look hip. It made you feel like you were somebody that you not. Like, like things started going twirling in my head. Like, what was your motive? What was your motive? Because you are a woman who is strong in her culture and your family is strong in their culture. Now, they say that her culture don't really care for black people unless they got some type of notoriety. If you a broke black man, you ain't got no chance with somebody like Jeannie Mai. None. Which leads me to say this to you guys. May get some slack. I don't care. The grass ain't always greener on the other side. All y'all who have this preference of a non-black woman or AKA a exotic woman, as 50 Cent will have caused girls that are not black. Y'all think they are just automatically submissive and give you peace and they don't cause you no problems. Listen, a woman is a woman at the end of the day. She gonna come with some type of attitude. It just depends on the level of her attitude. A woman is gonna be a woman. A woman is going to woman regardless. So, Y'all so quick to jump to somebody that's not a black woman. And then when you get into situations like Jeezy, although he the one who filed the divorce, it just it just makes y'all black men look a little crazy. It really, really does. Because y'all constantly get with these women, especially the men in the entertainment business. They get with non-black women after they done been with the black women for so many years when they was broke broke down and dusty all to get some type of status then leave the black woman to go with a non-black woman and now you in a situation like this good thing Jeezy had a prenup now what's inside of that prenup I'm not sure 
but he did file the motion to proceed with the prenup as is. So what she came in the relationship with, that is what she's going to leave with. But anything that they built together, they split down the middle. And he is filing for temporary permanent joint custody of their daughter, Monica. She's so pretty, y'all. Oh, she is so, she is so pretty. So, so pretty. I'm just sad that she, um, her parents are about to go through this uh, drama. And I said, although they signed the prenup, I said, I got a feeling that Jeannie is going to contest that prenup. She's going to contest that prenup. She's not just going to lay down and take that. She ain't going to do it. She ain't going to do it. She's not going to do it. And then I heard that she had her mama living with them. And it's just like, well, shit. Why y'all didn't buy your mama her own little condo or something? Why is she living in y'all house? That's y'all house. That man is going to want to be with you and only you a lot of the time. And y'all daughter. Like, I wouldn't move my, my mother-in-law inside of my actual house. I'd buy her her own little space. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I don't know, you guys. I don't know what the what the real issue is but I'm sure it's going to come out sooner or later but of course the court documents um, pretty much was saying irreconcilable differences is um, broken beyond repair like they not gonna get back together it this this is what it's gonna be now y'all know my mind be thinking right I'm like, what if this was a chess move of Jeezy, right? What if the prenup has some type of stipulations that she would get so much at the fourth year, two year mark, fourth year mark, six year mark or something like that. And he already had it in his mind that after two years, he was going to file for the divorce because he don't want to give her any more money. I don't know y'all i'm interested to know what's inside that prenup because i'm pretty sure there is something in that prenup that that talks about cheating and stuff like that so we gonna see we gonna see we gonna see like i knew it wasn't gonna last long but i didn't think it was gonna end this soon so this is this is something that's kind of like whoa like y'all it's just a whole lot of stuff going on it's just a whole lot of stuff going on with these celebrities and in their relationships and all i can say about it it is it is good for great tea talk and all those things i <laughs> i be like oh i'm so glad that i'm not a celebrity because to have my life on display day in and day out will be mentally and emotionally draining. So, y'all, this is it for um, this podcast episode. Let me know what y'all think about any of these topics that I discuss and put them down in the comment section let's have a dialogue um as always comments needs to be respectful or you're going to be blocked um yeah so i'm going to stay up to breast on some of these topics i can't do the christian and the blue face anymore i can't at least not for a while because i'm just so sick of them but anywho I'm going to end this right here, you guys. So I will talk to you guys on the next episode. Bye.